Hey Raghunath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kostuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archive classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from beautiful and sunny London, England. This is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center, Kastuba Das. Welcome to the show. Welcome to London and welcome to episode 600. This is our 600th episode. That's unbelievable. It seems like just yesterday when we were younger, episode was 500 was just remember episode 500. <laughs> like just like 100 episodes a moment ago. ago. And let me tell you this, my friend. Yeah. Today is not an ordinary Srimad Bhagavatam episode. This is oh, yeah. when Raghunath goes on the Maha squirrel chase mm-hmm. and we go deep into reincarnation stories and we have some personal stories. We got some stories from the New York Times. We got some Zoomers who are going to check in and tell their own crazy stories. We tried to cre- keep them as creepy as possible because sometimes reincarnation stories are a little creepy. And um, they're called. And yeah, that's what we're doing memories, for this show. Raghunath. Past life yeah. memories. Yes, past life memories. They come up. I, I tell you, um, and they say not every <laughs> child remembers their past life, yeah. um, but they say a few do. So whenever my kids were like little, I was like, tell me, tell me about your other mothers, any any other fathers. And they're like, <laughs> You're trying to feed them. I'm trying to like prompt <laughs> them, but I got nothing from them ever. Not uh, one of my kids told me about their past lives. Nothing creepy. Mm-mm. Just nothing, period. Like, you're my father. I was like, I know, but what other fathers do you have? <laughs> Just you. <laughs> How did Just you die? You. Who killed you? I, I know. What were, I always said that. What were you? What were you thinking be- before you were in mommy's tummy? What were you? What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> you're not making any sense. I believe in science, father. <laughs> Well, you know, that's an important point here because, you know, we're, we're this is kind of like a I see it as a, a gift to Raghunath, episode 600, where he has free <laughs> realm into the paranormal. Um, <laughs> Thank you. For that you're welcome. Although I may I may remain a skeptic. I may play the skeptic role today. Let's see. But this is you know, this is important, you know, that you and I have sometimes spoke about this. Um, this psych. he was actually. Well, I'll, I'll read. I'll pull some stuff up, but I think he headed up the the, the psych, psychiatric department at a major university, University University of Virginia. Of Virginia. Like yeah, Virginia. Ian Stevenson, who published what what you know, we'll, we'll read the story. But what happened was he got funded. His his university got funded a lot of money with the um, stipulation that they allow him to do full on investigation into past lives. And otherwise, it would have been hard to do the work that he did. But he did scientific research, you know, where he through interview, where he, you know, he found so many cases of of young children that were reporting things from previous lives. And then he would go and research those, you know, research that stuff out and see that it all lined up. And there's no way that the kid could have known it. Right? Yeah. And, and so stuff skept- like you can't yeah. just make up. Yeah, and and skeptics like details, you know, details that there's no way that this kid should know, and skeptics would follow along with this and say, you know, 
they just don't we'll read some about that but but the point is is you know like so much science depends on inference you know it's sure. it's you know i mean even a simple thing like you boil water at what is it 212 degrees i don't know <laughs> okay. i mean i'm in Mer- england it's metric it's 100, well, 100. degrees it's easier that way yeah and so um you know you do it once you do it twice you do it so many times and then you at a certain point you assume that it's going to the next time it's going to boil at that you know so even that's inference but what to speak of things like big bang and evolution those things they involve tons of inference and quite frankly faith you know um but but so although no one can you know we may not be able to prove like um you know empirically that there's past lives but these interviews they're very fascinating and and, and even skeptics will say well there would have to be some kind of massive bizarre conspiracy going on for this sure. you know for this child so so we can hear some far out stories about that hey maybe we should announce um the wisdom of the sages jelly gift box because oh yeah i think one of the first things people do during the holiday seasons is, is think how can i how can i give prashadam jelly to someone yeah. you know what we got you covered okay tell costuba well for that you go to happy girl kitchen now you can go to our web our instagram page um, I'll probably put it up on our Facebook page too, and you'll see an ad there for the special gift box that they've created. It's a, a gift box with gift box with jams, jellies, sh- a, a shrub in there. Shrub. You know, shrub, a shrub is a is? drink. If you don't know, it's, it, it's like a concentrated fruit drink that you can make more drinks out of. Made out of sage. Is that this right? That Air quotations. One. Get it? Yeah. Uh, and it also comes with a bug of a Gita. A higher taste cookbook and a copy of what was the other one? Um, Perfect question. Chen and be happy. Sure. Chen and be happy. I think it was. And so it's a really cool gift to give, and you get a ten percent discount if you use the coupon code W O T S. Watch Wisdom of the Sages. Watch W O T S one oh eight. They'll give you ten percent dis- discount. HappyGirlKitchen.com. We love Happy you, Yamuna Jelly. Com. Or, or again, go to our um, Instagram. Actually, in our if you go to our Instagram page and go to the bio link, we have a link for it there. Okay. All right. Yeah, so she's a great woman. She's on our show regularly, and we love her. And uh, she actually, she's more of an other. She confided. Well, she's a West Coast person. She's so a West Coast. I get it. Um, and she, yeah, but she's a very serious devotee. That means she's her, great. Her prashadam is her her food is offered with lots of love. Mm-hmm. Quality stuff. Yeah. You know, another thing I could mention quick, maybe, is please, next please. Tuesday is Gita Jayanti. It's the day that the Bhagavad Gita was spoken. And um, big you know, day in India. It's a big day in India. It's a big day. Universal. It's a big day in right? England, actually. Yeah. I was just at the manor this morning. Do you know that? Yeah, at the manor. The manor is incredible. <laughs> I haven't been there in 26 years. I haven't been there in a more. very long time. Too. Okay, go on. Sorry. So, um, so for that day, you know, like we want, last year we did this, we want to even expand on it. And we, you know, we're calling on people if you want to give back a little bit, right? If you appreciate wisdom, the sages and this community and your study and, and, and so here's a chance to distribute Bhagavad Gita's, the, the, our, our friends, you know, Vaishesh Prabhu is helping to head this up and we're going to bring him on the show either on Monday or Tuesday uh, to, to talk about this, but you can um, donate a case or two cases or ten, cases, however many cases you want of Bhagavad Gita's, and you can send them to friends. You could you could have them mailed to certain places. You can get them yourselves and give them to people, or they'll send them to wherever you want to send them. Like they send them to like prisons, they send them to hospitals, they send them to hotels. You know, like you know they keep, you know wherever you want them to go, they'll send them. So we're going to bring you more information on that in the coming days. If you'd like to donate some Bhagavad Gita's, we can do it and we can distribute. Thousands and th- hundreds of thousands of Bhagavad Gita's on that day, you can take part. So we'll be, we'll be bringing you more info on that. Okay, so now now we're gonna go we're gonna go between different uh, things that people sent us, and right. also some people are gonna come on live. And um, I want to bring on before we read anything, and Kostuba is gonna read some stuff. But before we go anywhere, yeah. I'd like to ask Bobby Marchan to jump on because she's got a good story because she's got a little kid. And her little kid has said some very, very creepy interesting things. <laughs> very interesting things. Very Can we hear? Interesting things. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, this is Bobby. Congratulations you? on your 600 episodes. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby. 
You've been with us from the beginning. We miss you. We love you. And we love your little daughter, Frankie. Now tell me of her creepy stories. (laughs) Well, um, in 2016, um, someone very, very dear to me, an ex-boyfriend, died really tragically. He fell down a flight of stairs and suffered a massive head injury. It happened on a Wednesday night and they kept his body alive and working until Saturday when um, all of his organs, they had figured out where they were, all of his organs were gonna go. And then they allowed him to continue on his journey. And what happened between Wednesday and Saturday is for another story, cause it's pretty crazy. Um, crazy a lot story, of it involved okay. like Radha Swami in the Bhakti Center and like just things what? that were pretty nuts. Um, cause I didn't find out until after he had passed. Um, needless to say, it was really, really devastating. And, um, to find out that someone that I had been in a relationship with and planned to spend my life with, um, had passed so, um, quickly. Um, and for a while I felt like he was around me a lot and so much so that I went to a medium to talk with her about the things that I was feeling and hearing and seeing. And one of the things that the medium had told me is that he and I travel lives together or our souls are in the same group. So it was not unlikely that we would meet again and quite possibly in the same life, but that is yet to be determined. Traveling in bunches. That's what Drew Lawrence says. We travel in groups. Yeah, we just Who knows what me and Kastuba were? Who knows? Exactly. Exactly. Oh, exactly. We will be. Okay. <laughs> we'll be. So um, later in 2016, mm-hmm. I became pregnant. And um, pretty early on, um, in fact, it was at the Eco Village. Um, I the Eco Village, started right. to have these feelings like, hmm, I think I know who I'm carrying. What? And it was just, it was a, it was a feeling that I couldn't quite put my finger on. And I only told a handful of people who wouldn't tell me I was a crazy person. And then I just kind of let it go. And Frankie came into the world and she's sweet little baby. And as she began talking, she started saying some things that were creepy really things. Let's, creepy. It's already getting, I'm already a little creeped right now. <laughs> creepy things. Um, one of the first things she said, it was around Christmas time when she was two. Like, and um, so my, the former, um, her former body was um, as a man named David. And she so said I that? Said, no, no, she no. said that? No, she didn't. I'm just letting oh, okay. you know that this is this person. Okay. And so it was Christmas time and I said something about Santa's coming. And she said, Santa Clarita. And I said, I kind of looked at her and she said, Santa Clarita, California. How and that's where David was. Santa Clarita, California is. I, I looked at her Santa Clarita, and she, I mean, she's a toddler who says Santa Clarita, California. That's where David was from. No toddler. No toddler says Santa Clarita, California. And well, I she just, was looking skeptical right now. Come on. Okay. Well, there, there, I right. need more. Anyway, the details are starting that's, to come. Like, that's a mild, okay. that's a mild yeah. point. Just do that. Um, anyway, she would, you know, there were other little things that she would come out with, but then one that really stopped me in my tracks was one afternoon, her and I were playing and she was around three. Yeah. And she said, do you remember the time that I fell down the stairs and I hit my head really hard? Oh my God. And I looked at her and I could just feel like, oh God. And she started laughing and she said, Hi, Bobby. I fell in the stairs and hit my head so hard. <laughs> she probably never called you Bobby before, too. Hi, Bobby. Hi, Bobby. Did she call you Bobby before that? No. Oh my God. No. Mm, that's creepy. That's creepy. creepy. Um, it's great. It's beautiful. It's actually true it's beautiful. love. It was like <laughs> and... I looked at her and like I started crying and I hugged her and she said it really hurt. Okay. And I said, oh, okay. Um, another interesting one that came up a few months ago is 
there's more. Her dad's sister was having a baby. Her dad. And, um, Who's dad? Her, Frankie's, Frankie's dad. Frankie's, Frankie's dad's, dad's sister. Dad's sister was having a baby. Okay. okay. And we were FaceTiming with her dad. And okay. he said, they're thinking of naming the baby Penelope. But Uncle John doesn't like that name. And Frankie got mad, like angry. How dare he? And I was like, yo, like, okay. And so we hung up the phone and Frankie was like, Penelope is a beautiful name. That's my sister's name, no. which is in fact true. No. David's sister. Yes. She said, it's Penny. My sister's name is Penny. It's Penelope. Mm-hmm. And I was Penelope. like, okay, honey, I know. I know your sister's right. name is Penelope. That, I understand. Right. I'm a, there's I'm, others, I'm, there's I'm, a I'm a believer. Other, <laughs> I'm a believer. Um, there's a lot of other quirky ones. She'll sometimes call me the nickname that David used to call me. Well, you know, um, one one thing that uh, Ian Stevenson found, and he, he I think, and again, we'll read about it. I think he, he had over 3,000 cases that he investigated, something like that, uh, was that commonly, in most of them, they involved a sudden and violent death. Yeah. Right. Mine too. The ones I'm going to read are all sudden and violent. Okay. Thank yeah. you, Bobby. That was You're welcome. wonderful and creepy. <laughs> yes, that was beautiful. I tried to go it's high beautiful. on the creep factor for you guys. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I appreciate the creepiness <laughs> Thank you. and your sincerity, and we love you. I Thank love you, Bobby. Too. Um, I have to go teach a private or else I'd stay on for the whole thing because okay. I'll tune back in later. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for sharing. Happy birthday, Bobby Marchand. Bobby Marchand. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Thanks for having me Ian Stevenson, you want to read that um, article? Um, okay, I got two things. Let, let me read yeah. you first something from the Scientific American, because this is the one, just to kind of set the, you know, this is written by a, a skeptic, right? Uh, in sci- published in Scientific American. It's by Jesse Baring, who's an associate professor of science communications at the University of Otago in New Zealand. Um, And so he's writing about Ian Stevenson and he says, if you're anything like me with eyes that roll over to the back of your head, whenever you hear words like reincarnation or parapsychology, if you suffer great parox, parox, paroxysms, paroxysms, I don't know what that means. Mara, work on that. (laughs) P-A-R-O-X-Y-S-M-S, paroxysms or despair. For human intelligence, whenever you catch a glimpse of that dandelion-colored cover of Heaven is for Real, I don't know what that is, or other such books, and become angry when hearing about an overly Botoxed charlatan telling a poor grieving mother how her daughter's spirit is standing behind her, then keep reading, because you're precisely the type of person who should be aware of the lay professor Ian Stevenson's research on children's memories of past lives. You got it. Rogan's attention now, right? Yep, I'm here. Okay, Stevenson, who died in 2007, was a psychiatrist by training and a prominent one at that. In 1957, at the still academically tender age of 38, he'd been named chair of psychiatry at the University of Virginia. After arriving in Charlottesville, however, his hobby horse and the paranormal began turning into a full-grown steed. As you can imagine, investigating apparitions and re and reincarnation is not something that college administrators were expecting of the head of their mental health program. But by 1968, Chester Carlson, the wealthy investor of the Xerox copying process, who'd been introduced to Stevenson's interest in reincarnation by his spiritualist wife, dropped dead of a heart attack in a Manhattan movie theater, leaving a million dollars to the University of Virginia on the condition that it be used to fund Stevenson's paranormal investigations. There you go. Right? All we need is funding. We can <laughs> we can figure this out, erase the doubts, shine yeah. some light on the reality of the okay. eternality of the soul. That money enabled Stevenson to devote himself full time to studying the minds of the dead. And over the next few decades, Stevenson's discoveries as a parapsychologist served to sway more than a few skeptics to lead his blushing acolytes to compare him to the likes of Darwin and Galileo. Stevenson's main claim to fame was his meticulous studies of children's memories of past lives. Here's one of thousands of cases. In Sri Lanka, a toddler one day overheard her mother mentioning the name of an obscure town, Katarangama, that the girl had never been to. 
The girl informed the mother that she drowned there when her mentally challenged brother pushed her in the river and that she had a bald father named Herat who sold flowers in a market near the Buddhist stupa. That she lived in a house that had a glass window in the roof, a skylight, dogs in the backyard that were tied up and fed meat, and the house was next door to a big Hindu temple outside of which people smash coconuts on the ground. Stevenson was able to confirm that there was indeed a flower vendor in Katarigram who ran a stall near a Buddhist stupa whose two-year-old daughter had drowned in a river while the girl played with her mentally challenged brother. I mean, how did the girl know that? How did the girl yeah. put that together, right? The man lived in a house where neighbors threw meat to dogs tied up in their backyard, and it was adjacent to the main temple where the devotees practiced a religious ritual involving the smashing of coconuts on the ground. The little girl did get a few items wrong, however. For instance, the dead girl's dad was bald, but her grandfather and uncle were, and his name wasn't Harat. It was the name, that was the name, rather, of the dead girl's cousin. Otherwise, 27 of 30 idiosyncratic, verifiable statements she made were panned out. We're going to call that science. Well, the, the point is, he's, inv he's investigating this from science. You're right. He, he's, he's lining up the... And right. trying to verify different statements and you know you can see if i read a little from the new york times article you, anyway it'll come out in this too it, it, it's serious investigation even though it's a subject that a lot of people aren't ready to, to consider seriously they won't right? even consider it yeah so the two families never met nor did they have any friends co-workers or other acquaintances in common so if you take it all at face value the details couldn't have been acquired in any obvious way the Sri Lankan case is one of Stevenson's approximately 3,000 such past life case reports from all over the world. And these accounts are in an entirely different kind of parapsychological ball, ballpark than tales featuring a middle-aged divorcee in a tie-dyed tunic who claims to be the reincarnation of Pocahontas. There you go. See, that's More what freaks everybody out. <laughs> More often than not, Stevenson could identify an actual figure that once lived based solely on the statements given by the child. Some cases were much stronger than others, but I must say, and this is a skeptic science, you know, sci scientist speaking, but I must say, when you actually read them firsthand, many are exceedingly difficult to explain away by rational, non-paranormal means. Much of this is due to Stevenson's own exhaustive efforts to disconfirm the paranormal account. Huh, he tries to disconfirm it, and then he's stuck with, like, what can I do? Is it an anomaly? Through exhaustive efforts, he tries to dis disconfirm it. This is a quote from, from um, Ian Stevenson. We can strive towards objectivity by exposing as fully as possible all observations that tend to weaken our preferred interpretation of the data, he wrote. If adversaries fire at us, let them use the ammunition that we have given them. Right? This is, this is you know, real, true objectivity, right? And if truth be told, he excelled at debunking the debunkers. Mm. I, I'd be happy to say all, I would be happy to say it's all complete and utter nonsense. A moldering cesspool of irredeemable anti-scientific drivel. The trouble is, it's not entirely apparent to me that it is. So why aren't scientists taking Stevenson's data more seriously? The data doesn't fit our working model of material of materialistic brain science surely there you go but does our refusal to even look at his findings let alone to debate them come down to our fear of being wrong though this is again this is a quote the wish not to believe stevenson once said can influence as strongly as the wish to believe right so in other words scientists can be just as religious you know as sure. religious people Stevenson's magnum opus, published in 1997, was a 2,268-page, two-volume work called Reincarnation and Biology. Many of his subjects had unusual birthmarks and birth defects, such as finger deformities, undeveloped ears, or being born without a lower leg. There were scar-like, hypopigmented birthmarks and port wine stains and some awfully strange looking moles in areas where you almost never find moles, like on the soles of the feet. That's what they say, huh? Yeah, they, well, they, they come- like Those marks are from some wound. They do, yeah. And um, so he, it says, uh, reincarnation of biology contained 225 case reports of children who remembered previous lives, 
and who also had physical anomalies that matched those previous lives, details that could in some cases be confirmed by the dead person's autopsy record by, by the dead person's autopsy record and photos. A Turkish boy whose face con whose face was congenitally underdeveloped on the right side said he remembered the life of a man who died from a shotgun blast at point blank range. A Burmese girl born without her lower right leg had talked about the life of a girl run over by a train. On the back of the head of a little boy in Thailand was a small round puckered birthmark and at the front was a larger irregular birthmark that resembled the entry and exit wounds of a bullet. Stevenson had already confirmed the details of the boy's statement about the life of a man who had been shot in the head from behind with a rifle, so it seemed to fit. And a child in India who said he remembered the life of a boy who lost fingers of his right hand in a fodder chopping machine mishap was born with boneless stubs for fingers on his right hand only. This type of unilateral brachydactyl <laughs> Brachydactyli, I don't know, is so rare, Stevenson pointed out, that he couldn't find a single medical publication of another case. So, you know, this is, it's interesting, but it's, in a simple way, we, you know, when we speak of reincarnation, we say that the, the, the next body is born based on the shape of your mind, really, right? Like, we're, you know, and if, so if one, you know, had a deep mental impression of a physical malady, that that it could somehow play out in the creation of the next form, right? The the psychiatrist found several patterns in his work of children's memories of previous lives. First, he was convinced that there is only a brief window of time between the ages of two and five, in which some children retain these reminisce r r memories of an earlier self. Importantly, their statements are, in principle at least, empir empirically falsifiable. If adults don't automatically dismiss young children's utterance as gibberish, any spontaneous comments suggested of a past life can be carefully recorded so researchers like Stevenson might later confirm or disconfirm their accounts. That's what also, my brother did. My brother did. He? His daughter was saying all these things, and, and he would say, no, those, those aren't real. You're just making them up. I'm your real father. Well, She's that's like, very no, common. No. That's it. Yeah, yeah. That's most common. Yeah. Also, as with the Sri Lankan girl, memories of previous lives tend to occur only when something in the child's current life jars the recollections awake, in cognitive science terms, a form of recognition memory. In other words, it's mostly useless to interview a child. This is what Raghunath is doing, right? <laughs> trying, to get, trying to pull something out. It's <laughs> mostly useless to interview a child about his or her past life since, like remembering one's dream from the night before only while lying in bed tonight, Hmm. Recall can't be forced on the spot, no matter how hard you try, Ravana. Stevenson also believed that although past lives may be common, only a small percentage of children retained any memories of their previous existence. Even in India, where nearly everyone believes in reincarnation and it's nothing special, only about one in every 500 children fit the bill. I, mean, I could read on, right. but that's, you know, that, that gives you a good taste of well you know what because Stu, i think because there's a lot of different stuff i'm going to read some ones that i know from a carol bowman who's mm -hmm. a uh who's another who's was like a student of uh your guy what's his name just read, said it ian stevenson ian stevenson she, she, was a, she was a student now she's a huge authority on it i want to get her on the show actually but mara's got <laughs> some she, mara yeah. she wants to read some actually she, let's check in with nityananda granger he's got a good story nityananda nityananda unmute him mara Nityananda is from the Texas Zoomers, regular Zoomer, and he's got mm -hmm. some story here. Let's hear. Not only regular Zoomer, he heads up our Shloka chanting group as well yeah. as a sage group. He's a, he's a sage in his own right. Mm -hmm. and we stayed with him on our cross-country trip this year, me and the boys. Where is he? Hi, Krishna. There he is. Hey, so Prabhu, welcome. I have uh, two stories. They're, they're written down by my wife. Um, a little bit creepy. Well, I'll try to I'll try to make it creepy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so, um, so this is my wife writing. Yeah. I was three years old when my What's father left. Name? Krishna Mangala. Krishna Mangala. Okay. I was three years old when my father left his body. My only memory of him uh, is of him arriving home from work, and suddenly turning red looking at me with tears running down his eyes as he took his last breath. I kept on screaming, Papa, 
don't die. The night wow. while we had the wake, I went to sit on the patio next to a tree. This is in El Salvador. I felt afraid, worried, empty, sad, and lonely. I remember looking up at the stars and wondering if my dad is now in, in the sky looking at me. At the time, someone came to sit next to me and handed me a gift. That person assured me that I would be okay. So one day while I was brushing my daughter's hair, this is our daughter Vishaka, she was four years old. She told me, mommy, remember when you were little and you didn't like ponytails and braids? And I was like, yeah, oh my God, yeah, I, I didn't like. I, when I was little, I felt like braids and ponytails were for country village girls and I was a city girl. I used to undo my braids at school before entering and wear my hair down. I was internally wondering, how does Vishaka know this? And then she added, she, remember, she said, remember when your dad died? I said, yes. How do you know this? She, she responded by saying, I came to see you because you were sad. I sat next to you by the tree on the patio and I brought you a gift. I told wow. you everything would be okay. Do you That's remember? Like sweet. It's not creepy. It's actually sort of sweet. It's sweet. It's a sweet creep. <laughs> I was in total shock. I gave Vishaka a hug and told her, yes, I remember. I thanked her and asked her what was her name, but she said she couldn't remember and smiled as she walked away. Now, and, and um, other members of her family also remember this lady coming and giving her lady. Or they, she, she doesn't remember if it was a lady or a man, but somebody coming and giving her a gift um, uh, during the funeral. And then this is the second story. In March of 2001, this is my wife is 17 at the time. I was stopped by a monk at Grand Central Station and given a book and got introduced to Krishna consciousness. I started going to the temple in Brooklyn in April of 2001. During this time, my mom started telling me how I was getting what uh how i was getting to what i was getting into and believing in the same stuff that my dad did a few months before my dad's death apparently he started to visit some church in which they spoke about the laws of karma eastern philosophy which was pretty much taboo back in the day in my tiny country of el salvador both my mom and my sister said that he used to bring me home coloring books they had monks with shaved, shaved heads and ponytails for me to color. Wow. My mom said that he used to tell her, I'm not able to explain this to you, this philosophy to you, because you can't understand or believe in karma. You just don't get it. And the point is that my mom used to say, uh, was said that I was in the same stuff that my dad was into. So our son, Ramananda, when he was seven years old, and we were in the process of moving to our new home that happens to be across the street from the temple. He stood outside, looked at the temple, then looked at our house and said, remember how your dad died right before he got his Tulsi beads? He was a devotee and he didn't get his Tulsi beads. What? <laughs> I was like, what? That's in zero. And then he just ran off to go play. My, my friend Pamela was there. And she started crying, say, saying, how does he know this? And then she said, never mind. I know, but it is just amazing. Mm, and I have one more story. Is a Christian miracle. Keep it going, Nitya Nanda Chandra. You're, <laughs> right. on a, you're on a mystic roll right now. Okay. We're on the edge so of my, our seats. So my friend Achuta, it was, it, we were both brahmacharis. We were both monks in the subway. And he, he was the one that approached Krishna Mangala, for, for, uh, a.k.a. Karla. Your wife, yeah. yeah. And she had, her, uh, she was donning her punk attire. And I said, when I saw them talking, I said, hey, I used to look just like you. Because you and were she punk. Said, yeah. And okay. she said, well, all my life, I wanted to become like you guys. I wanted to become, you know, like a nun. I'm like, what? And I was like, okay, take You'll, you'll like these books. T take some of these books with you. And um, she said, yeah, I'm interested in reincarnation. 
and, and then we invited to her, uh, her to to the the Sunday feast, and she says, "No, um, I'm I'm a vegetarian." <laughs> and she, <laughs> it's like, no, all the food is vegetarian. And then she said something really weird. This is not about this is not leading into, but this is just a little detail. She said, "No, I don't like any food with garlic and onions." There we go. <laughs> No, none of the food has garlic and onions. That's the odd thing to say. It is odd. So then somebody from her uh, that she knew from elementary school was walking down the subway. And she says, oh, I got to go. This is an old friend. I haven't seen her in a long time. And so she she left with her friend. And her friend was like, how you doing? Are you, um, are you dating anybody? What's going on? She says, no, I don't date. She said, what? You don't date? Uh, how are you going to get married? Who are you going to marry? And she said, well, maybe that monk guy, he seems kind of nice. And um, the old date the girl you distribute the book to. <laughs> so so she she went off and um, about a week later, she had a dream. And, and this dream, uh, she didn't tell any of us about this dream until a, uh, a year later. So this dream was I was walking down the street. And I waved and I got hit by a car and she ran up. She put my head in her lap and I said, uh, don't worry, we'll get married in our next life. And then uh, a few days later, I called her up because we were calling up people that were uh, that showed some interest. And we called her up to invite her to the Lord Ram's appearance day. Um, said we have a, a, a big festival. So I, I called her up and I called her up, at, I could say the, the depths or the, the, the crescendo of depression. She was, uh, it was like the height, darkest moment of depression. And I called her up at that moment. And I said, Hare Krishna, this is Nityananda da, 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 from, and she's just like, what? <laughs> Who? What? <laughs> and, um, said we're we're calling we have a ramnomi festival we have a, a play uh, uh, and we're just calling people up to let them know and she says well i want to go right now um well As a matter of fact, I, I want to get married right now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and she said um so we said well there's nothing going on right now and, and it's kind of dead on, on a on an off day you know she says well can i go or not and i said yeah yeah you can come she said can someone meet me at the subway station? Because I'm, I'm, I also a little bit afraid that I'll just get lost trying to figure my way around Brooklyn. So uh, I said, okay, we'll we'll meet you down there. And then, and so I went. She called from the subway from the payphone. I went down there, and I went across the street. I waved, and she was like, "Oh my God!" It was the you know when you recognize a person's cadence, like how they move or how they. And it was just like the dream. And she was just like, wait, wait, wait. And then she crossed the street. And so that was this the tie there. Mm -hmm. And then um, there's more to the story. But um, a year later, she did see that girl again from elementary school. And she said, oh, you're married? She said, yes. And she said to that monk guy, she said, yes. So, <laughs> All right. <laughs> quick jump to the end. Chandra, you're a mystic in your own right, sir. Harry Bell, thank you for all I the just, service you give for wisdom of the sages and love to your family. Thank you, thank you. Good stories. Mara's got some interesting info. Mara, Mara. Mara's, it's, yeah. It's not Mara, my own. It's from uh, the discussion forum from Carol Bowman. Oh, oh okay. it's the Carol Bowman. I'm just going to share. Carol Bowman is a, what's her, what's her bio? I just pulled her bio up somewhere. Oh, I lost it. Oh, yeah. Care about her first two books, Children's Past Lives and Return from Heaven about reincarnation have been published in more than 23 languages. Bowman has also been a practicing past life regressionist or therapist um, for adults uh, for more than 25 years, conducting training courses to teach practicing therapists her method of past life regression therapy. She's probably the most um sought after a th author on this right now that um, Ian Stevenson's gone. And so she has this incredible website, Carol, Carol Bowman.com, B-O-W-M-A-N. And both me and Mara just, you know, we went through it. We scoured it and found some goodies. But people write on this message board and they're just like, oh, look, I, this is the first time I've ever done this, but this happened. And they sound so authentic. Like, I, we, I don't know what to think. I'm a skeptic, but this happened. 
Okay, you got one of those for me, Mara? Yeah, I do. So this person writes in and she says, I've never written on anything like this before. It actually makes me a little nervous. But anyway, I've been looking on the internet for someone talking about their child having past life, past life memories from 9-11. Mm, My son has been talking fun. about it for almost a year now. He's almost four. He started out insisting that he doesn't just want to be a firefighter, but that he is one. He would get up in the morning and put on his fire outfit, which was his reward for being potty trained, and tell me he's going to work. He would take his play axe and pretend to chop down the walls, et cetera, because there was fire behind them. That's how it started, and then it just progressed. We were reading a Curious George book about him being in the big city, and he said very matter-of-factly, bad men knocked those buildings over, pointing at the Twin Tower picture. He's I'm about to been, cry. I'm about yeah. to cry right now. I, I'm like tearing up in like, I don't know if that's sadness or happiness or freaked outness, but my tear ducts are filled with tears. Yeah. Um, and so she says, you know, he's never been exposed to any of the 9-11 scenes. She's and she's also a stay at home mom. Then he said the planes broke in them and he couldn't help. He also said there were people jumping because they could, wouldn't wait for him to get them. He told me he was stuck and was trying to break through the wall to get the people out because they were calling for them. Mara's crying. He, he has also gone on extensively about the type of trucks he was in, the color bucket on the truck and how it feels to come down from up high in the bucket, very detailed about firefighting and has stated he's not a firefighter, he's fire rescue. We have no firefighters he said in the that. family. The three-year-old yeah. said that. Fire the four-year-old said that. Yeah. We have no firefighters in the family, but the details I could go on with forever. He also talks about his friend, Mike, that is also a firefighter. It's opened up my eyes to a whole new reality. My husband still doesn't want to believe it, but the details are far too much for a three-year-old to make up. Mm. Makes me feel better. Someone else is experiencing this too. That's the Christian miracle. Yeah. Yeah. That's a Christian. By the way, um, I want to give a special shout out to your dad and love to his uh beloved dog that has just died oh, and yeah i mean had to, yeah so Who we love you papa birthdays? tony and that's a special dog you love that dog you're a devotee you love that dog that dog has a, a better a better birth for sure a spiritual birth a, hu a human spiritual birth eat some prashad give some tulsi i had a cat we buried him buried that lovely two leg two-legged cat with tulsi and I told that story. And I also want to give a special shout out to one of our regular listeners, um, Bob Healy's father passed last this oh, early yeah. this morning. Oh. And um, he was he was old and he was a great soul, a super great soul, like a rags to riches soul. story, but ethical and strong, charit incredibly charitable. And, you know, he gave a lot that made Bob who he is, which is a great soul. And then Bob's spiritual life affects those who 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 love him. Our advancement affects those who love us. And so it's a it's a beautiful uh, symbiotic relationship we have with our relatives. Um, can I drop one? Yeah. Can I well, drop I was gonna one? say Zoe's here. Yeah, okay, let's get Zoe on the on, on, on uh, I didn't see her. She's here? She's yeah, here. she's here. Zoe. Hi guys. Hello, yeah, hi. hi Krishna. Can you hear me? We can yes, hear you. Can, Zoe. Excellent. Hi guys. Um I'll, I'll, I'll make this brief. You wanna hear my story real quick? That's yep. why we called up on you. Yeah. Bless you. Yeah. All right. So it's about <laughs> um, it's about little Cleo, my daughter, who uh, many of you know. Um, Speak English, so please. We can't understand you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Speaking with a strange accent. What is that? Sorry, you guys. It's Cockney. Um, so <laughs> that's right. <laughs> representing. That's right. Um, so basically, when Cleo was between one and two years old, uh, my grandmother, her great grandmother was alive and she turned 100 and we went to London for my grandmother's birthday and it was very impactful for both of them because um, the next day my grandma couldn't remember anything apart from this little girl with her curly hair bouncing around and whatnot. So we go back to New York and some months later, Cleo's in that stage where she's beginning to talk and she's communicating what she wants and needs, and though her vocabulary is very limited, she never says anything that doesn't make sense. Like, it, it always has a point. And mm. sometimes she would get frustrated if I didn't understand her, but she never just said gibberish things. So one morning, it's just me and Cleo in the apartment. I go to get her up, and I go to her crib, and she looks me in the eyes, and she says, my grandmother's name was Rini. She looks me in the eyes, and she goes, Rini, night, night. 
And I went, what? And she was like, Rini gone night night. And I said, no, baby, Rini's in London. It's kind of probably lunchtime. Let's get you up. She's like, no, mama, Rini night night. And I'm like, no, Cleo, Rini is in London. It's time to get up. And then she goes, Rini poo poo. And I'm like, what? Child, what are you saying? Do you need to go poo poo, Cleo? She's like, no, mama, Rini poo poo. I'm like, okay, maybe. Your great grandmother needs to go poo poo. Maybe you need to go poo poo. Let's get up. And she starts getting super upset and she starts saying over and over again, Rini night night, Rini poo poo. I'm like, Cleo, I, please calm down. Give me one second. I'm calling my mother. I ring my mom and my mom goes, Thank God you've called. I'm in the hospital. Your grandmother died. They resuscitated her. There's something wrong with her lower intestines. And I think she's going to be okay. But like, she stopped breathing. And I was like, yeah, Cleo told me. Wow. Paranormal connections across Paranormal four generations. Wow. My mom. My mom. Now, now that's re reincarnation, but that's that paranormal connection. My mm -hmm. mom. I remember my mom wanted to go to New York really bad. We, we were living in Connecticut. She wanted to go to New York City to visit her mom. And um, and, she, and my father was like, it's, it's an inopportune time. She's like, I really want to go see my mom. I really want to go see my mom. My father was like, you can't, not right now. It's just not a good time. And then um, she woke up and she had a dream. Her mom had left her body. Mm -hmm. And she called immediately her mom and she had just left her body. So I, there is connections with this, with people that we love. Probably those same people we're traveling with. Thank mm -hmm. you, Zoe Buckman. Thank, Thank you. Hi, Krishna, everyone. Hi, Hi Krishna. Okay, I've got one for you. This is from Carol Bowman's website, too. Okay. Um, all right. This lady writes I in. Hope it's creepy, I don't because we need a creepy one. Like, OK, wait till you, you hear this guy's name. Life, that kind of thing. Okay. I don't know anything about past lives as I was brought up to believe they are bull. Yet now I am at a loss to describe what is going on with my three year old <laughs> and I'm doing all the research I can. She has a very detailed understanding of what it looks like to drown. She can describe what it feels like to not be able to breathe and vividly reenacts this for me to see. This is a three-year-old. Hmm. La last night, she was playing and kept telling me of her other mommy and daddy. And when I pointed out that she had no other mommy and daddy, she said that she did before she came out. She came to us and that they died. Intrigued, I asked how and when she went. Um, she, uh, uh, intrigued, I asked her how and she went on to matter of factly describe how a mean man she calls him wolf knocked on their door he was mean to her mommy and so her mommy pushed him and then wolf proceeded to stab her and push her into the water where she drowned she said she was very scared at first it was just her at first i thought it was just her imagination as she is a very smart girl so I just said, oh, OK, and left it at that. Then around one, when she woke up to go to the loo, I guess it's from England also, I couldn't help but ask her again about the mommy and daddy. She got irritated with me and, and, and said, I told you they died and proceeded to tell the exact same story as before. No change of details. That's it. What do you think about that? <laughs> that I was think pretty good. Great. Yeah, I mean, you know, in all, you know, now these are all interesting. We can tell so many interesting stories. Um, but what's really fascinating about this work of Ian Stevenson, and now you're saying it's been followed up by Carol Bowman. Carol Bowman. CarolBowman.com. Go to their message board. It's incredible. Is is that when you get, you know, you the interview's done and you get all the the details, right? Okay, here's thirty details that this child has told, and then you go and investigate them, and then you you try to debunk it. And you try to find out how is it possible that this child could have possibly known there is no explanation and then you see that that happens again and again and again you got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cases of it at that point even a skeptical person should start to think maybe there's something to this you know but uh I, I, let me just read you one uh, statement by ian stevenson he, this is from a new york times article a new york times interview with him and uh the interviewer asked you have repeated the saying Science changes one funeral at a time. What did you mean? <laughs> That's a pretty good saying, right? Yeah. Science changes one funeral at a time. He said, and this was Ian Stevenson's answer. He says, science develops ideas of what is so 
and it becomes very difficult to force scientists to take a new look to take a look at new data that mm. may challenge existing concepts. I'm not trying in any way to replace what we know about genetics or environmental influences. All I'm offering is that past lives may contribute a third factor that may fill in some some of the gaps in our knowledge, you know. And so really, you know, people may relegate ideas about reincarnation. You know, there are whole there are whole, you know, countries even continents that largely accept reincarnation, you know, where it's not an sure. uncommon belief. But, but even there, like the scientists being influenced by Western science may be skeptical. Um, and it's, it's the idea here is that, um, you know, once you're tied into your, your particular research that you've given your funding and, 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 and your um, well established, you know, entrenched in, in certain beliefs, you know, beliefs, it's really hard to shake a person, even a, even a scientist, from that. But um, you know, one funeral at a time. You know, right. it's, it's it's like gradually those people come become replaced, and new ideas, you know, can become um, more widely accepted. Um, Mary, you got one more. I mean, there's a, a bunch of people wrote in. I don't know if we have time for all of them. Um, there was a good one from there was a good one from Banjo Mike who talked about his his son just like spontaneously at a very young age going into meditation poses. He's not taking off his shirt and sitting in meditation poses, uh, you know, repeatedly and uh, seems to be somehow connected to a Chinese Buddhist meditator. Then I got this one from uh, Aaron from London who says that his two year old daughter is a grappler, understands the art of martial arts and jujitsu and knows actually how to grapple. <laughs> Taking down all the other two year olds. <laughs> yeah, choking she them does out. a single. I think my son was also. <laughs> he does single leg takes downs. He knows how to pass the guard. I didn't even teach him any of this stuff. Mara, you got one? Uh, yeah, so this is another one that somebody wrote into us from. We might uh, go a few minutes over today. It's 600. Cut us some slack. <laughs> Premanjali Davidasi wrote in. She said she'd like to share a story her grandmother used to tell about her aunt, who's her mother, yes, mother's youngest sister. When my aunt grew old enough to speak around two years old, she would cry every time it was time to eat. This was not just a small cry, she would be bawling. She would say, how can I eat? My children are looking for their mother. I haven't fed my children yet. They must be starving. And this continued on for a long time. They would have That's to console creepy. her and try to get her to eat by distracting her because it was very emotional for her. She literally wouldn't eat and this happened with every meal. Finally, mm. as she grew older, she just forgot about it. That's what happens. That's what happens after age five. It all slips away. Yeah, you think this is normal. You think this is real. It's not. <laughs> Maybe I could read one last little short thing here, Rago. Sure. This is this is for, or unless you want to still do more. This is do you from just. I, 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 I want to do one or two more. Sure. Mary, do you have another? Yeah, you can close it. Mary, do you have any more from Carol Bowman? Uh, not not great ones. All right. She's got I mean, some great ones. Dig there. around yeah. there, people. Okay. So this, this to wrap it up, this is, again, from Jesse Barron, who wrote that um, Scientific American article. And he goes, the, he says, the mind is what the brain does, I wrote in the Belief Instinct, a book that he had written. It's more a verb than it is a noun. Why do we wonder where our mind goes when the body is dead? Shouldn't it be obvious that the mind is dead too? Perhaps not so obvious at all. I'm not quite ready to say I've changed my mind about the afterlife. But I can say that a fair assessment and a careful reading of Stevenson's works has rather miraculously managed to pry it open. Well, a tad anyway. Okay. <laughs> But, you know, I think that's it. You know, like, let's, you know, let's truly be open about it. You know, these, the, the book that I first heard about Ian Stevenson in was the book Alien Identities by our, our you know, nice past friend. friend, you know, uh, Sadaputa, or Sadaputa what is it, Steve, is it, Dr. Richard Thompson. And um, he was quoting, but that was a book about UFOs, right? And but what he was just saying was that you 700th know, 700th episode, Kostuba, seven hundred UFOs? UFOs. What about OBEs? We can do that. What too. are those out of body experiences? Oh, oh that's another good one. Let's yeah. do that. Uh, 650. That's 650 that's, out of body experiences. 
that's a, that's another realm where it's like you know someone's describing something that they were not you know apparently you know they were you know um under anesthesia at the time and they were watching from another angle they could describe in or detail they were what dying, just happened or they left their body yeah. or yeah, near de- many how about many cases ndes near death experience yeah that's a whole thing <laughs> okay it's a whole so, thing so um what was i saying uh, oh yeah so so the book alien identities about ufos what he the point that he was making and he and he compiled so much research was just that these things that have been described in books like Mahabharata and Ramayana and Srimad Bhagavatam, which people will write off as mythology, actually there are people speaking about these things even now, <laughs> you know, you know, right. all kind of far out things that happen, paranormal things that happen, you know, to this day we still get, but it's just people are skeptical. They, they just filter them right out of the conversation. Now, obviously within that realm, there's a lot of, um, you know, bogus, um, testimonials and so on but right. there are serious scientists who've who've you know applied science you know the scientific method to these you know um testimonies you know who, who've who've gone to great pains to filter out you know false information and, and, and so on and um it's worth taking seriously you know so his point was uh i i think what he was sharing there was let's open our minds a little bit that let's not just write all these things off as mythology Maybe right. there's even more going on right now. It's just that we're not even open to, to um, we, we're not willing to expand our mind enough to consider even the possibility. As we say here on Wisdom of the Sages, it's all real. It's all real. <laughs> Maybe all you say it. I, we don't know. I say we don't, it. We don't I say it. Say I say it. it. I'm Wisdom Mary, of the Sages. do you say that? <laughs> I don't say it. <laughs> you don't say it? Come on. It is all real. <laughs> <laughs> that is. Aliens, past life today. regressions, oh, well, oh, outer body experience, near death experiences, all that stuff's real. Demigods, okay. angels, singing angels, angels with perhaps wings, mystical beings. They're all unicorns. <laughs> yeah, it's true. There's no show unicorns. tomorrow, right? Bigfoot. Tomorrow. Bigfoot's real. The, the, <laughs> Bigfoot is. It, uh, uh, hello, the Ramayan. <laughs> what do you think that is? The Wookiee, that is Bigfoot. Hanuman is a Bigfoot. A Sasquatch. Loch Ness Monster? Huh? Loch Ness Monster? Why not? Why not? <laughs> Why not? We still don't even know what's down the Mariana Mariana Trench. We don't know what's there. They're okay. finding things washing up in New Zealand all the time on the shore. They don't even know what it is. Crop circles. Crop circles. Crop circles can be fakes, but they are also <laughs> real. Okay. I Why not? It was all real. <laughs> it's all real. It's all real. But what you can about fake, you can um, fake things? Spontaneous human combustion. That is completely g- legitimate. <laughs> it's documented in Western newspapers for your Western sensibility. What about that bovine? What's that one where they operate on cows? You know that yes. one? Bo- yes. Bovine mutilation. Real. Something Real. Like that. Yeah. Real. They, they drink the... Yes. They do things to the animals. They experiment. They probe them. Yeah. They, they probe them. Uh, Alien and, uh, abductions? Of course. Of course. <laughs> Why not? Okay. If you were a higher being and you wanted to just... We do it. We do it to frogs. We abduct the frogs and then we cut them open and we check them out. Why wouldn't other higher beings do that to us? It's I the micro and the macro. Not. It's the Fibonacci spiral, Costuba. It's all real. Shape shifting. That is in our books. I'm not making that up. <laughs> That's in our books. That is, uh, what do they call it? Kama Rupa. Any shape you want, you, you. it's a mystic city. It's one of the sub-cities. All right. How about entering into stone? Hmm? Oh, mystic cities, yeah. It's a mystic city. Entering at the stone, Lord Chaitanya entered into the deity. Mirabai entered into the deity. It's a thing. I'm not making it up. Here's the real question. Are there underground cities? That's what I want to know. Underground oh, cities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm? yeah. Maybe. I don't know. You know why? I don't know everything, but I like to say there could be. Thanks, everybody, for joining for us for episode 600. Woohoo! A big Harry Bowl to everybody. And thanks to Mara for all her dedicated service. Kostuba for the company. The Zoomers who keep me uh, accountable every morning for showing up. And thanks to all the others out there and Californians who uh, are just from California. Thank you for being you. Thrilling. And remember to check out Happy Girl Kitchen and get your Wisdom of the Sages box with the coupon code WTS. 
108 at gmail.com. We have Shama Sunder on the show this Sunday. Shama Sunder's inspirational. He's got stories that we, he's li- he is the uh, Indiana Jones of Bhakti Yoga. So please join it. You won't be let down. That's this Sunday, but it's a later time. It's at okay. 2 p.m. Eastern time. 2 p.m. Eastern. We'll be back Everybody on hands Saturday, in the though, air. But no show tomorrow. No show tomorrow. No show tomorrow. Hey, what about hands in the- snake people, the Nagas? The Nagas? Wait, when's Q- what day is it today? Thursday? Today's Thursday. Thursday and Q&A. Day. Okay, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Nagas. Snake, what about- snake people is real. By the Fairy way, this whole folk. thing, reptilian, that's real. That's Fairy from folk. Naga Locus, planets of... You know what? Why not? Why not? Haven't you ever seen, like, you go into something and there's tons of bats or there's tons of frogs? There's wells that have tons of frogs in it. Or, or you move things and there's tons of mice. They move like a, a, a tarp and there's tons of mice. Why not tons of snake people? Why not? <laughs> Why not? That, that proves it right there. <laughs> what, what, what about men in black? No, I'm just saying, why not? We don't know. Just because I've never seen a snake person. It could just be a... It could, I haven't seen every species. You know what I mean? I'm living in a tiny bubble of reality. It's it's safe. It's safe to say I don't know everything. So my next question is, could be. That's a very reasonable approach. 